I used to have a pretty active lifestyle. I actually worked out fairly consistently and was in decent shape, mostly just because of my hobby or passion happened to be parkour. I loved learning about my body's limitations and then training to safely exceed them. And so just by eating somewhat healthy and working out here and there alongside my parkour training, I was actually in decent shape a few years ago. But then I remembered that I'm American, so I started working 12 hour shifts in front of a computer. I quickly replaced exercise with Taco Bell. And look at me now. Not really, that's not actually me. But if I'm going to continue with my original YouTube plans, I'm gonna have to get in shape first. And it might as well be by putting the very best methods out there to the test to get in the best shape of my life. After which I'll be training in and teaching you the core techniques from either Krav Maga, rock climbing, or boxing, depending on what you guys want to see next. But for now, without further procrastinating, let's get on to the top 5 healthy ways to get lean. Entonces tenemos primero el número 5. Morning fasted cardio. So not enough people know that in the morning, in a fasted state, just 30 minutes of cardio is equal to an hour and a half of cardio later in the day. And that's because in the morning, your insulin levels are low. And we'll definitely get deeper into this in future videos, but to keep it basic, as you can see looking at this chart, the closer your insulin levels are to baseline, the better you are at mobilizing and burning fat. And with them being lowest in the morning, that makes this by far the most effective time to do cardio because it essentially forces your body into using fatty acids for energy. But there's a catch. If you do this wrong, you'll actually be consuming your own muscle tissue instead of fat as energy and no one wants that. So make sure you follow the following equation to reach directly into those fatty acids for energy. So I want you to take 220 minus your age and then multiply that number by 0.6 and 0.75. So as long as you keep your heart rate within this range, you'll be directly accessing fat for energy. Number four, eat more fiber. So you know the afternoon energy crash you have, the one company is trying to convince you is completely normal and the only way around it is to buy their energy products. Well, you'd probably benefit more by eating more naturally fiber-rich foods. Fiber aids and slows, slows the digestive process, making you feel fuller for longer. It also slows the release of carbohydrates, which gives you a more steady, slower stream of energy throughout the day, preventing that insulin spike that promotes weight gain and leaves you feeling lethargic and craving more sugar, which is one of many reasons why using a piece of fruit to satisfy a sweet tooth is so much better than that candy bar. So number three, track everything and set achievable goals. Of course, logically, we all understand how crucial this is. And yet how many of us who say, oh crap, I should probably start eating healthier, actually make significant changes through setting those goals, specific goals and sticking to them. More than likely, you find yourself right back at Taco Bell getting your Crunchwrap Supreme and Baja Blast. If you want serious results, you're going to have to come up with serious plans and serious commitments or it's just not going to happen. So go ahead and define a goal. Make sure it's very specific. Like for me, I want to reach 13% body fat percentage. Then break that goal down into smaller sub goals that show your progress along the way. This really helps you recognize the progress you're making and stay motivated. Of course, to even get there, you need a very specific and well-designed plan. For me, I'll be using the information provided in this as well as my next video for an optimal healthy weight loss plan and I'll be personally putting to the test for as long as it takes to reach my goal. But no matter what plan you follow, make sure you track your progress every day. Not just because it helps you know that you're actually following the plan or stay motivated, because most importantly, it helps you stay consistent. Consistency is by far the biggest key in succeeding at any of this. And tying into that to help you stay consistent, set specific consequences for when you're not. Like for example, if your goal is to lift weights three days a week, each day that you miss could mean $5 in a jar that you're gonna donate to charity. Or me, you know, just throwing out ideas here. And behind door number two, we got plan your meals based on caloric density. So originally I filmed a section on this in the kitchen, but um, the audio is pretty bad, so I'm just gonna narrate over it. And yeah, by it, I mean me awkwardly walking around the kitchen and messing with stuff. 
Again, this is one that a lot of people understand yet still don't put into practice near as much as they should. I mean, we all know that obviously we can't lose weight if we're not in a calorie deficit. We need to be burning more calories than we take in. And unfortunately, a lot of people equate this to meaning that they have to starve themselves to lose weight, when in reality, you can eat a ton of whole foods and still be at a deficit. A lot of us really just don't realize how many calories we're actually taking in. So in this first part, I really just want to show how quickly junk food adds up. So let's roll a count, calorie counter on these few snacks. That's right, ladies and gents. These few snacks pack almost no nutritional value, about 700 calories, and probably worst of all, enough pure sugar to spike your insulin through the roof, leading to a slower metabolism and increased fat storage no matter what you're eating along with it. So let's look at some alternatives. Of course you got your baby carrot sticks, They're pretty good, dip them in ranch, steam them, whatever. But let's say you don't smother them in ranch. You could pound 164 of these bad boys before reaching the same amount of calories. That's ridiculous. Okay, so you want something sweeter. This whole cantaloupe clocks in at only about 185 calories. And this entire bag of broccoli, only 200 and freaking 35. So I could literally eat this full bag of broccoli, the entire cantaloupe, and 58 carrot sticks before we'd reach the same amount of calories as our fructose fix over here. Now let's be clear, I'm not saying this because I expect you to eat carrot sticks for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or because I expect you to count the calories of everything you eat. What I'm saying is, by basing your diet around the right natural foods and living a healthy lifestyle, you don't need to count calories. I mean, look at this, I'm gonna give you a moment of silence to just appreciate how much more you can eat as you get to healthier options on this comparison graphic. You made it to number one and a new shirt because I hate myself and I decided to record this on another day. So number one is high intensity interval training, or HIIT training, which as it sounds is basically intervals of high intensity training pushing your body to the max for about 30 seconds and then three to four minutes of lower rate exercise kind of resting in between for about four to six rotations. So you might be wondering why is this number one? Well, let me tell ya. Turns out there's actually a study done where they had young adults subjected to either a 20 week endurance training or a 15 week um, HIIT training to see which would be more effective for fat loss. And even though the endurance training took twice as much estimated energy per workout, the people doing the, the HIIT program still lost more fat. In fact, when it adjusted for the energy expenditure difference, the results show HIIT training as being nine times more effective for fat loss. Yeah, nine times. So how is this possible? Well, for one thing, if we break it down and really simplify things, it makes sense if you think of how the body adjusts to its environment. If you're doing a very simple, repetitive, non-strenuous task over and over, your body's going to adjust. Your cardiovascular system is going to become more efficient, and it's going to take a lot more effort to burn the same amount of calories as before when you're just doing the same, you know, if you're just running on a treadmill at the same speed every day. Second, your body's going to start to catabolize or break down muscle fiber because it realizes, hey, I don't need all this, it's just slowing me down, let's get rid of it. If you're trying to become more athletic, increase your speed, your um, athletic performance, your vertical jump, uh, don't just do cardio. It's a bad idea. Because HIIT training, on the other hand, has basically the opposite effect. Your body says, oh wow, I can't handle this at all. It spends the next 24 hours just trying to catch up. Like it, Studies show that after a simple HIIT training session, your body's metabolism is vastly raised for the next 24 hours. Um, that is a loud crow. Don't know if you can hear it. On top of that, HIIT training is proven to raise testosterone and GLUT4, that's how you say it, GLUT4 concentration in the body. Which means that, yeah, you're going to retain that muscle, you're going to build more muscle, you're going to be more efficient at burning fat and building muscle. If you don't believe me, just look at the age-old comparison of marathon runners and sprinters. They're both amazing athletes, they're both great at what they do, they work out a lot, but they have vastly different body composition. Sprinters still retain their muscle as well as their low percent body fat. Whereas marathon runners tend to be very skinny. Be 
because that's a natural adaptation to excessive cardio. Anyway, again, this is a very simplified overview of HIIT training, but I do want to recap on some of the benefits. Just look at these for a minute and let them sink in. You're not going to find a more effective all-around training method than HIIT. And I highly, highly recommend it for anyone who's trying to get healthier in any way, and especially to lose weight. So that about wraps up our top five. I really do hope this helped you out, and please apply these principles. I mean, it's 2017, it's a brand new year. I get that New Year's resolutions are jokes to most people, but <laughs> um, don't say you don't have the time, because if you base a plan around these principles, you will have the time, you will see the results, and you can reach your goals. And I'll be right there with you. I'm gonna be posting my personal plan here pretty quick, as well as weekly progress vlogs, probably every Saturday. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.